right here in the call. It's in the city center in the heart of Jerusalem. But why? What's going on in the pavilion is there are believers from all over Israel gathering to lift up the name of Jesus. They're singing songs in Hebrew that are based on scripture, and people aren't so happy about it. where they're preventing the Messianic Jewish believers from entering the conference right behind me, all because they're believers in Yeshua. This is the reason why they're protesting. Well, as you can see, the Antichrist spirit, the Scarlet Harlot, is alive and well in the midst of Jerusalem. Not all her people are that way, but there is an element of the Antichrist spirit that's already working, and this group of Messianic Jews, and they wanted to go and sing praises to Yeshua in the middle of where the heart of God is in Jerusalem? Well, these were the protests of the ultra-Orthodox that came there. About 50 of them came to protest because in their mind they came there to be missionaries and try to convince the youth to become Christians. And they are very much against Christians the gospel message of Messiah Yeshua very much against um, you know the gospel message of the Lord and his testimony and they are working against God by doing these things and it's for this reason that Jesus is going to come and down from heaven to bring his wrath and the judgment of God upon the people who are having the anti-Christ, the anti-Messiah spirit. Lamentations 3.25 says, The Lord is good unto them that wait for him, to the soul that seeketh him. And, you know, I already told you that you have to realize that Jerusalem is mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots because she played the scarlet harlot against God in ancient times with the ancient monarchy. So you've got this anti-Christ, the false messiah movement. They're going to put a man on that throne. And, you know, whatever that man's going to say is going to go. So you're going to have conflict during the time of Jacob's trouble. This is why the two witnesses are coming to Jerusalem and they will be slain by these people I believe it will be some decree by the Sanhedrin when they come into power the Sanhedrin members are the ultra-orthodox and they are against the gospel against Jesus against Yeshua as king as you can see in these videos that just came out and it's for this reason that Elijah and Moses the two witnesses that were witnesses at Jesus transfiguration and talking about what he was about to accomplish they're coming in the time of Jacob's trouble to Jerusalem to Preach the everlasting gospel of Yeshua. And they are coming in lamentation, wearing sackcloth and ashes. This is what 
was happening with the Jewish people in Israel with the Israelites and the tribe of Judah the royal lineage when they were taken off to Babylon they were lamenting and Jeremiah the prophet wrote lamentations so the two witnesses are coming to Jerusalem in lamentations and mourning and this is why she's elevated in her heart saying I sit a queen and am no widow I shall see no mourning I shall see no lamentation but exactly the opposite is going to happen when the Lord brings his judgment and puts an end to the restored Davidic dynasty with a man on the throne and Satan wants to elevate himself in that place on God's holy mountain Mark 10:33 says Behold, we are going up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be betrayed to the chief priests and to the scribes. These were the Sanhedrin. And they will condemn him to death and deliver him to the Gentiles. So he was delivered to the Romans to be executed on the cross. And it was his death, burial, and resurrection that is God's testimony of everlasting life and he is the way back into the Garden of Eden-like state because he reverses the curse of Adam and Eve that took place in that location and he restored healing to the flesh and removes death from the flesh so that he breathes his life-giving spirit into us and we're resurrected to eternal life as it should have been in the beginning before mankind sinned and brought on the curse of death. Romans 15:12 tells us and again Isaiah says there shall be a root of Jesse and he who shall rise to reign over the Gentiles in him the Gentiles shall hope. And of course that root of Jesse is um, you know David's father was Jesse so Yeshua is a descendant of King David. He's a Jew. He's a royal Jew. And he restores the Davidic dynasty eternally. But these in Jerusalem want to reject him as their king and set another king upon that throne, which is going to happen fairly soon, I should say. Through his blood as the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. As the second perfect Adam without sin to reverse the curse in the flesh because he bore the stripes and the piercings in his flesh on the cross as the bread of affliction and he takes us back into the Garden of Eden like state and the two witnesses come to proclaim this but you can see that they're lamenting the are mourning but the prideful ones there are saying we shall see no mourning and God's gonna have to come down because they are counteracting his testimony So this was the far-right ultra-Orthodox Jewish harassment of believers in Yeshua in Jerusalem that you just saw. This is the Antichrist spirit that's alive and well in Jerusalem. It says Orthodox Jews stage angry protest at Messianic Jewish concert in Jerusalem. So they were just having a concert amongst themselves and these ultra-Orthodox came to harass them and scream and yell and blow these little party horns to try to make racket and noise. Adam Eliyahu Berkowitz wrote this June 27th, 2023 about this event which he posted in his Israel 365 news and it said that on Thursday evening the Messianic Jewish Alliance of Israel known as MJAI hosted a worship concert titled Pe Echad or One Voice 
at the Pavilion in Jerusalem, a venue owned by Messianic Jews. The event was promoted within Messianic congregations and on the MJAI website and billed as part of a biennial series that began a decade ago consisting of holding a recorded live concert featuring songs written by local artists. The organizers stated in the promotion that it was not an evangelical outreach event. Approximately 1,000 people attended. Approximately 50 Orthodox Jewish protesters showed up and became overtly vocal and antagonistic. The protest was organized by La Hava or La Achim and La Familia organizations that oppose Christian proselytizing in Israel. Detractors have labeled the organizations as being racist. Police were called in to restore order and ensure the safety of the concert goers. One suspect, an activist with La Hava, was arrested for attacking a police officer. The event continued despite the protests. Tickets for the event were listed at 50 NIS with half price tickets offered to children and soldiers. And that's not uncommon for them to have a cheaper price for children or seniors or anything like that or soldiers people in the military there's nothing unusual about that while proselytizing is legal in Israel the protesters claimed that the reduced pricing violated the legal prohibition against offering remuneration and proselytizing to minors so they're making stuff up here the chairman of the La Hava organization, Benzi Gopstein, explained his objections to Hebrew language, Arut Shiva. Quote, it is not clear to me how such a conference in which they try to convert children to Christianity in a way that is clearly prohibited by law is held in the heart of Jerusalem, Gopstein said. We will be there in any case in a legal demonstration to tell those missionaries you are not welcome here. You have nothing to look for here. In addition, we will explain to innocent Jews who may come to the conference why it is dangerous and we will try to convince them to cancel their participation in it. And like Rabbi Gamaliel said, when he when the other Jews of the Sanhedrin said and advised the disciples of Jesus not to preach in his name, Rabbi Gamaliel prophesied and he was like the top rabbi in the temple. And we see what happened in that situation in Acts 5 verse 17 and it says the apostles arrested and freed. Then the high priest rose up and all they that were with him in Jerusalem, which is the sect of the Sadducees, and were filled with indignation, and laid their hands on the apostles, and put them in the common prison. But the angel of the Lord by night opened the prison doors, and brought them forth, and said, Go stand, and speak in the temple to the people all the words of this life. And when they heard that, they entered into the temple early in the morning, and taught. But the high priest came, and they that were with him, and called the council together, and sent to the prison to have them brought. But when the officers came, and found them not in the prison, they returned and told, saying, The prison truly found we shut with all safety, and the keepers standing without, before the doors. But when we had opened, we found no man within. And the apostles were brought before the council, which is the Sanhedrin. Now when the high priest and the captain of the temple and the chief priests heard these things, they doubted of them, whereunto this would grow. Then came one and told them, saying, Behold, the men whom you put in prison are standing in the temple and teaching the people. Then went the captain with the officers and brought them without violence, for they feared the people, lest they should have been stoned. And when they brought them, they set them before the council, and the high priest asked them, saying, Did not we straightly command you that you should not teach in this name, which is Yeshua, Jesus, and behold, ye have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine? 
For before these days rose up, Theodos, boasting himself to be somebody to whom a number of men, about 400, joined themselves, who was slain, and all, as many as obeyed him, were scattered and brought to naught. After this man rose up, Judas of Galilee in the days of the taxing, and drew away much people after him, and he also perished, and all, even as many as obeyed him, were dispersed. And now I say unto you, this is Rabbi Gamaliel speaking, refrain from these men and let them alone. For if this counsel or this work of Yeshua I have to put that there. Be of men, it will come to naught. But if it be of God, ye cannot overthrow it, lest haply ye be found even to fight against God, which is what they're doing right now in the same city 2,000 years later. To him they agreed. And when they had called the apostles and beaten them, they commanded that they should not speak in the name of Yeshua, Jesus, and let them go. And they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. And daily in the temple and in every house, they ceased not to teach and preach Yeshua, the Messiah, which is Jesus Christ in translation. So it's the same segment of society in the same city, the Scarlet Harlot people that are Mystery Babylon the Great that have the anti-Messiah, anti-Christ spirit. In other words, the anti-Yeshua, anti-Jesus spirit. So right there you have Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots. She always was playing the harlot against God. And Yeshua demonstrated that in his, um, you know, writing on the ground before the harlot that was brought before him to condemn her. And the oldest ones left first because they realized that their ancestors had played the harlot against God. And they were supposed to be the wife of God but they played the Scarlet Harlot. So in Revelation, you've got the same group of people in the same city performing the same hateful rhetoric against God, working against God, or preventing people from coming to God. They're trying to prevent the children from hearing about Yeshua so that they will believe in Him in their heart and be saved. And this is not God's will. God wants them all to come to him. And, you know, the people were there for a concert to sing praises to Yeshua. And this is really what they were trying to prevent was the stopping of the name Yeshua from being preached right there in Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots. So it's the same element, it's the same group, and it's rising up into the Antichrist spirit for the last days for the time of Jacob's trouble. So the two witnesses are coming there to Jerusalem wearing the sackcloth and ashes in lamentation. And they will be performing all of these things that proved the works of God through Moses and Aaron's rod uh, turning the water to blood and during the days of Elijah where he prayed and the rain was shut up and you know it didn't rain and this is what's going to happen when they come there. They're giving them a last chance to recognize their king and repent. Just like God you know turned Nebuchadnezzar into a beast because he was a king but he was made to be like a beast, eating straw. They come from grain, so he probably was not just eating green grass. He probably was eating some sort of grain. And he did this, I believe it was for seven years, until he recognized that God is the true God, the one who created the universe, and that he's the king of Israel the king of Judah, 
the eternal Davidic dynasty. So this is what these people that are Antichrist spirit, the beast, the new king that's going to sit on their throne, that they're going to welcome with open arms because they are rejecting King Yeshua. And um, this is where the Lord's going to come down and put an end to the kingdoms of this world, as I've said. So a lot of people are saying completely opposite things of this because they don't understand the revelation of the Holy Spirit. They just don't have it. And this shows right now what the Antichrist spirit is that's happening there in God's holy city, Jerusalem. So it says that this group, Lahava, refused to comment to Israel 365 News about the events. Carolyn Hyde, who was born Jewish and describes herself as a believer in Yeshua, has lived in Israel for 20 years. Hyde is a musician who has participated in the event in the past. She was at the venue on Thursday and witnessed the protests. She said the protesters tried to block the entrance and were quite aggressive. We were behind someone who was harassed. Hyde told Israel 365 News. One person was videoing and they had their phone slapped out of their hand. It was really sad to see and some people left without seeing the concert. But the police set themselves up as a barrier and made sure that whoever wanted to enter could do so. But there was a lot of screaming and anger. The level of hatred it broke my heart, Hyde said. It really did. We are usually permitted free worship, and even though there are very few believers, we are accepted in Israel. We have a lot of friends who know we are different, that I'm a believer. These relationships are built on let's get together, Hyde said. I believe in don't push your faith on me, and I won't push my faith on you, and let's see where we can have a positive dialogue that helps us all. Hyde understands the anger at Christians who come to Israel to proselytize Jews. I'm not a missionary, she explained. A missionary is someone who comes to a country that is not their own in order to share the gospel with people who are not their own, and then they go back to their own country. I, I am in Israel. All my life I was taught Israel is the only hope. And it really isn't Israel that's the only hope. It's the King Yeshua who restores the eternal Davidic dynasty, the creator of the whole universe, and only he can reverse the curse and bring us back into a Garden of Eden-like state. So she said, I learned from the Tanakh and the New Testament. Sure, I'm not going to lie. And if you don't know what the Tanakh is, it's just a, a Jewish Bible. When people ask me questions, I'm happy to speak with them about it. That happens a lot, actually. But I prefer to spread the gospel by living like Jesus, where Jesus lived, keeping Shabbat and the feasts, she said. I don't even like the word proselytizing because that signifies that your faith is something that you have to put on someone else. The incident comes one month after a similar confrontation that took place at a Christian prayer event adjacent to the Temple Mount in Jerusalem. And I also reported on that one, but unlike the recent MJAI musical event, the event at the Davidson Center Archaeological Park was protested by several prominent rabbis and explicitly called for participants to pray for the nation of Israel to receive their Jewish Messiah, Yeshua, Jesus. This protest was followed by a statement from Jerusalem's Sephardi chief rabbi Shlomo Moshe Amar, who condemned the harassment of Christians in the capital city. There is no doubt that this was done by irresponsible people who are not Torah observant, Rabbi Amar said. We declare that such behavior is absolutely forbidden. We must not disrespect any human being who was created in the image of God. In addition to the obvious prohibition mentioned above, this behavior also constitutes a desecration of God's name, which is a serious sin, and not the Jewish way. It is known that during the time of the temple, 70 bulls were sacrificed during the seven days of Sukkot for the 70 nations of the world. 
and prayers were held for peace, their peace, and the spread of peace in the world. It is also a duty for young people to behave with respect and honor, as is the way of the Jewish people. So there's going to be one group of Jews that is Antichrist spirit, another group of Jews that's not Antichrist spirit. The statement was shared on Twitter by Fleur Hassan Nahum, one of Jerusalem's deputy mayors who handles the tourism and foreign relations for the city. She has been working to stop the harassment of Christians in Jerusalem. Jerusalem is a city that sanctifies freedom of religion, so when I received complaints about Christians being harassed in the old city, we took action, she said on Twitter. I am pleased the chief rabbi of Jerusalem has sent out a public letter to clarify that this is against Jewish law and should stop. Rabbi Pesach Woliki the executive director of the Center for Jewish Christian Understanding and Cooperation, which is the CJCUC, explained that these recurring confrontations are coming at a crucial time in Christian-Jewish relations. It is tragic that these confrontations are coming at a time in history when so much positive change and progress is being made in the Jewish-Christian relationship and when Christians worldwide are moving away from replacement theology, the supersessionism that claims the church replaced Israel. So basically that would be the Roman Catholic Church and some of the other cult groups. Rabbi Wolicki said the Catholic Church and many branches of Protestantism are actively rejecting supersessionism. We are now seeing Christian leaders including Pope Benedict on the one extreme to prominent evangelical leaders on the other extreme who are rejecting the call to evangelize Jews. And I think that um, John Hagee had made that comment that they did not need to be converted. So that was a long time ago though so I don't know whether he changed his view but you can find it on YouTube. Nothing is more damaging to the Jewish-Christian relationship than Christians who still seek to proselytize Jews, working to convince Jews to leave their Jewishness and become Christian believers. And nothing could be further from the truth. I mean, you just become more Jewish if you accept the king of Judah for eternity, the Davidic dynasty that returns. How are you less Jewish? You aren't. You're way more Jewish. So it's just a crazy belief. At the same time, it's equally tragic when Jews target these Christian events in a way that shows them as attackers. While coming as the result of a history of harsh Christian attempts to convert Jews, these unruly protests are often interpreted by the outside world as Jews prohibiting Christians from worshiping as Christians. Well, clearly that's what that looked like in those obnoxious party horn trumpets they were blowing. This misinterpretation is made even worse when the protests call to shut down the event rather than peacefully raising objections to proselytizing. It is even more difficult when these protests lead to confrontations with the Israeli police. By behaving in an unruly and violent manner, the anti-missionary Jewish groups are literally putting money in the pockets of the groups that they are protesting against. There's absolutely no doubt that the Christian groups that put on such events and that do missionize Jews will use the protests against them to raise money for their cause and will do so successfully. These anti-missionary protests only help the enemy when carried out in such a disgraceful manner. It's my fervent hope and prayer that all the positive changes that have been happening in the Jewish-Christian relationship do not get weakened or derailed because of harmful behavior coming from both sides. Jews universally view attempts to evangelize Jews as an attack on the Jewish people. On the one hand, these foolish and disgraceful displays of violence and anger do nothing to bring the light of the Torah to the world. And the only one that's really bringing the light of the Torah to the world is the Messiah himself, Yeshua, the King of Israel. And yet their eyes have been blinded in part until the fullness of the Gentiles comes in. 
and it's up to the Holy Spirit to open their eyes to see who he is you know um, a lot of people have the idea that they are to be forceful and in their own power to try to shove it in people's face but that's not the way it really does work what really changes somebody's heart to believe that Yeshua is their King and their Messiah is the Holy Spirit unveiling it to them through his power and this is you know an incredible testimony of the Lord and the Lord says you know in Deuteronomy where it's giving the ironic blessing it says that if you know if the Jewish people if they would pay attention to God's commandments and his statutes and his testimonies that the enemy would be removed from off the land well now I don't see these people as the enemy but you know the conquering invaders through the centuries that kept coming to Jerusalem and trying to claim it as their own the reason why all this was happening is because people were drawn to the spot of the Garden of Eden and they wanted it a piece of it they wanted to return there and they wanted to own it so this has been like conquering after conquering after conquering and then finally when we're in the end of days the Lord revives Israel he's reviving the ancient monarchy that had the deadly wound in the head with a sword and yet she lives because that king that deadly wound is healed by God and he allows them to become a nation again and then recapture Jerusalem as the eternal city preparing the way for the king to come but they're going to set up the king on a throne on an earthly throne just like a King Saul and then you know Yeshua who's the rightful heir of the throne that Daniel the prophet was a prince of Judah wrote the scroll about which was the books seal up the books till the time of the end Yeshua is the one who opens that seal who opens that book and those are the judgments you know the vials the trumpets the bowls the judgments that are coming during that seven-year time of Jacob's trouble so it's because they are putting another king on that throne and rejecting God as their king as their Yeshua as the one who came to redeem them in the flesh to reverse the curse of the flesh of death and bring eternal life by coming to life when his spirit breathed the life into him and he came out of the grave and was seen by all the people in Jerusalem well not all the people but certain select people got to see him and those that were already dead that were Jews that had anticipated his coming and were believing in him they came out of their graves alive and were seen in the eternal city which is Jerusalem and the holy city and so you can see how it's being set up for his return and so he's going to come down and destroy everything of the scarlet harlot that's going to come right there to Jerusalem that's already there in this hateful antichrist anti-Yeshua spirit because they're rejecting the king of kings and lord of lords for themselves so all these people want is for them to have eternal life too but they're rejecting that for themselves and it's up to the Holy Spirit to open their eyes to see and other than that the two witnesses are coming to them because it's going to get really really bad as soon as this attitude spreads and you can see how bad it already is with you know the members of the Sanhedrin the ultra Orthodox wanted to pass the bill to get rid of the gospel in Jerusalem and Israel and to not speak Yeshua's name 
not even privately amongst people in their own emails and I guess they would have some sort of blocking device in your computer to prevent it so you can see how the Antichrist spirit is already there and how the beast that is a king is already being set up to bring forth the 70 nations representatives that will sit in the Sanhedrin building with the new Sanhedrin to become the world supreme court who will force all of these things on all the remnant of people that are not raptured up. The ones that are being raptured up are the ones that have accepted God as king which is God has become my Yeshua. He's my salvation. So we've accepted that. So we're going to go be with our king and then the Lord is going to open Daniel's seals and one by one the wrath is going to be poured out the two witnesses are going to witness there in Jerusalem and be killed there and the Holy Spirit's breath is going to breathe into them and they're going to stand up on their feet to the shock of all of those who were clapping and grateful that they were dead and they're going to go up in the cloud and be with the Lord, Elijah and Moses. You know, they have Elijah and Moses and the Lord said if they will not listen to them, they will not listen to one who rose from the dead, which is the king, which is Yeshua, Jesus. He is the Messiah that was resurrected from death to life, reversing the curse of death in the flesh so we could go back into the Garden of Eden-like state. So, I hope you are beginning to see how Jerusalem is the scarlet harlot and in the end she reconstitutes another king to sit on that throne who will enforce all of these things on the people. So that time is coming and it's very obvious that the Antichrist spirit, the anti-Yeshua spirit is alive and well right there in Jerusalem, God's holy city. So he's going to have to come back to put an end to it. And believe me, judgment is coming there because the Antichrist is going to defile the third temple. And, and it's the same bad behavior that the ancient monarchs of Judah did right there in the house of God. They brought in idol images and set them up in there. And it offended God so badly that he had the temple destroyed by invading armies. Not once, but twice. And a third time, they're going to do the same thing they did, you know, 2,000 years ago, right there on God's holy mountain. And then the Lord's going to come down and claim all the kingdoms of this world as his and start reigning here in Jerusalem. So it's incredible and I just wanted to share this, uh, show you the footage that you know was on the news and everything and Adam Eliyahu Berkowitz report about it. And this is the second time this has been going on and also there were other times where the ultra-orthodox were throwing chairs over in the women's area at the women. They wanted to stop women from having the Torah scroll over on their side of the Western Wall where they pray. They wanted to stop them from um, wearing uh, phylacteries or uh, prayer shawls or anything, uh, you know, being able to pray there freely and God is against this because they're actually stopping people from coming to know Him when they're putting their man-made stuff onto other people. So I hope this is opening your eyes a lot more to that what I've been saying is completely the truth of what's going to happen. Um, there's no doubt about it. So we know the King is coming and we're ready for our King. So with that, I would just say, like, comment, and share, and um, support my channel, paypal.me slash 
K-K-R-O-C-O-C-O. And the mailing address for donations is Kimberly K. Ballard, B-A-L-L-A-R-D, P.O. Box 246, Niwot, N-I-W-O-T, Colorado, which is C-O, 80544. Thank you so much to those who have given to me um, and blessed me in the past and recently. And um, I thank you very much. I'm really just wondering how soon we're going to be out of here. And by the way, my book, The Almond Tree, Aaron's Rod, The Messiah, King of Israel, which is a huge testimony for the last days of Messiah, Yeshua, Jesus, and revelations from the Holy Spirit in there and some miracles that happened. Um, somebody hacked into my publisher's website, and so for a day or two, it's being taken offline to be repaired. So... Um, there's a temporary page set up which I will post below this video that you can go to and order the book if you'd like. It's uh, a little bit cheaper to order directly from my publisher than to go to the online bookstores like Amazon or Barnes & Noble, ChristianBook.com, Goodreads. Um, there's a few other ones. There's a link to order it from New Zealand if you're there. It's printed in uh, the UK, in England, and it's printed in Australia and the United States. So that helps it get worldwide printing and publishing overseas. And hey, thank you for listening, and thank you for subscribing. I appreciate it, and the thumbs up. See you later.